Recall that there are two basic daemons for scheduling tasks on a Linux system. The first, AT, utilizes the AT daemon, or ATD, but it's for scheduling commands to be executed once at a specific time. The second one, CronTab, is the one we're interested in this time. It utilizes the cron daemon, or crond, and it's used to execute repetitive or chronically scheduled tasks. Some useful CronTab switches are CronTab-L, which lists the user cron table, CronTab-E, which creates a new cron table, and CronTab-R, which removes a cron table and all scheduled jobs if you're done with it. CronTab file entries are written in a straight line, where each job or task consumes its own line. It also follows the following field structure. In the straight line, the first part is the minute, the second the hour, the third the day of the month, the fourth the month of the year, and fifth the day of the week. Zero or seven are Sunday, one through six is Monday through Saturday. Here's an example. To schedule the shell script doomsday.sh to run at 4.44 a.m. on December 21st, irrespective of the weekday, you would write 44 for the minutes, 4 for the hour, 21st for the day of the month, 12 for the month, and an asterisk or wild card for the day of the week, since it doesn't matter. And then finally, the complete path to the job, or the script, in this case, doomsday.sh. Here's another example. To schedule scan.sh to run at 11.11 a.m. every Thursday of each week, I would use 11 for the minutes, 11 for the hours, a wildcard for the day of the month, another wildcard for the month, since they don't matter, and then finally for every Thursday I would use 4 to represent the day of the week. Then I would finish it with the absolute path to my script, scan.sh. Note, etc cron.allow and etc cron.deny control who can and cannot use cron. Another means of scheduling tasks is to use the cron daemon. Um, and these are for things we wish to happen repetitively or on a, you know, a repetitive scheduled basis, like maybe backing up the system every Tuesday or Thursday evening. Um, if I were going to do this, I have to create a cron table. And so first I would do cron tab dash e to edit or create a cron tab file. And this isn't the first time I've done this, but if it were on the system, it would ask me which, what's the default editor I want to use, vim or nano. Use a nano in this case. So just pick your favorite default editor. And notice the syntax. Um, the syntax goes the minute of the hour, the hour of the day, um, in this case the day of the month, the month of the year, and the day of the week, and then the command that you want to run. So let's say I wanted a command to run only once every single year on a specific date at a specific time. I'm going to do the first one. So at 7.45 we'll do this one for 7.47. So the minutes are going to be 47. It's 24 hour formatting, but it's in the AM, so it's going to be 7 is the hour. The day of the month, if you look, it's you know January the 11th, so it's going to be the 11th. The month is going to be the 1st or January. The day of the week, well, the way that works is um, you know 0 uh, or 7 would be considered Sunday, and then 1 through 6 are your weekdays uh, Monday through Saturday. So Monday being 1, today is Tuesday, if you look at the clock up here. So it's going to be 2, that's the day. And then the command I want to run, and I'm just going to do foo1 here. All right, so that's 47, and this would happen only once per year at that specific time, on that specific date, that specific month, that specific day of the week or Tuesday. Now, another thing, another option I could do is use wildcards. So if I do 747, um, I'm going to specify a wildcard. Like, what if I want this to happen not only in, you know, on the 11th and not only in January, but maybe every single Tuesday, regardless of the month. Um, regardless of the date, the day of the month, or regardless of the month itself, this would simply happen every single Tuesday at 747. And if I chose that, um, I'm going to run foo2, foo2 there. And they, remember this one pings Yahoo and that one pings Google. And if you look at my clock, I ran out of time there. It's already 747. So let me move this up one minute. We'll make it 748, so to speak. All right, so I'm going to do Control X. I want to save this. Y for yes, enter. While we wait, if I do crontab-l, that'll list my jobs. So at 7.48, I should launch foo1 and foo2. Um, and if I do this, pux and then grep, and remember they both launched the ping command for Yahoo and Google. Notice right now, nothing's going on. This is just, I'm grepping for ping. That's the only process I do, but I'm, I'm not actually pinging anything. So let's wait for the cron daemon to initiate the script foo1 and foo2, which will ping Yahoo and Google respectively. So the clock just struck 748. So if I hit the up arrow and grep again, 
now notice the PIDs. Over here, Foo1 is pinging Google, or excuse me, Foo2 is pinging Google, and Foo1 is pinging Yahoo. And again, to be kind, let's kill those processes. So I'm going to kill 6157, and I'm going to kill 6158. And if I did that, again, now if I grab, now those processes aren't running. Now I'm, I'm just grepping for ping. That's all I'm doing there. All right, so we have looked at several crontab commands, crontab-e to edit or create a cron table, crontab-l to list it. And um, let's say that I want to, again, here's, you know, maybe I've, I've decided I, I no longer want to run foo1 and foo2. So if I want to get rid of it, I would just use crontab-r. And let me do that. I'll remove the cron table. And now if I were to list it, no cron tab for C Germany. So two different ways of scheduling tasks, depending on whether you want it to be something repetitive. Um, maybe I'm going to do, you know, CPIO and tar and back the system up. Well, that would definitely be, you know, a cron table. I want to use the cron daemon. On the other hand, maybe I just want to run a batch job or, you know, some files or, or have something execute while I go to lunch. And that particular situation, it would be the AT command. So your choice is up to you. They're you know they're both very useful features in Linux Ubuntu.